Hey, good day here. Mike Mata. We're going to talk about transport layer TCP and the process of how it works, looking at it with both Observer and Wireshark. So what TCP offers is reliable packet delivery. When I start the connection, I send the sync request to you. I have a sequence number. We're going to do sequence number plus one is the appropriate act because we're not sending any data. You're going to send me your sequence number. I'm going to take it plus one, and that will be my act to you. And at that point, we are synchronized. From then on, how we do reliable packet delivery is my sequence number plus data length, or think application payload. So sequence number plus data length is the appropriate act from you. Or if I'm sending you multiple packets, it will be my sequence number plus length is my next sequence number plus length is my next sequence number plus length and eventually you'll act me depending upon timers and how many outstanding packets etc. TCP again since we're providing reliable packet delivery the way that it retransmits data is if I send you sequence number plus length I start my retransmission timer and if my timer expires and I haven't received an act from you I will retransmit that same sequence number plus length and typically what causes retransmissions are lost frames, drop packets, CRC aired frames, cable problems, those kinds of things. So TCP also offers flow control and the way that it does flow control is using a receive window and that's a two byte field that is part of the TCP header and we'll take a look at that. Part of that flow control also is that positive acknowledgement with retransmission that we just talked about. I send data, you tell me your window size, I'll try to fill your window, I send data, I expect an ACK. When I've filled your window, you'll ACK me for the entire window hopefully and we'll continue to move on. You'll tell me your new window size and I can continue to fill your window. Most efficient. Multiplexing of conversations or connections. Again, I can have multiple sessions, sockets, circuits set up between us. My uh, source port talking to your destination port. We can have multiple of those. And on each of these conversations or sockets, there's error control, TCP header checksum. So the TCP checksum not only checksums the TCP header, but it also checksums the header plus data, all the application data that is being transported. So here's the header. My source port or think address at the transport layer, port you know 1057 talking to port 80, and then my initial sequence number you know, whatever that number is, should be a random number. The ACK number in the initial sync will be zero because I haven't received anything from you. So I'm going to set my initial sequence number, set the sync bit here. So I'll turn on the sync bit and that will tell you I want to synchronize sequence numbers. Hopefully you will ACK me taking my sequence number plus one and that will be the ACK number from you. So you'll turn on the ACK bit and the sync bit. Hopefully you'll agree to synchronize with me. Tell me your sequence number. I will ACK you with your sequence number plus one, the appropriate ACK. And, you know, we have established our session. We're ready to communicate. And from that point on, it will be sequence number plus length is the appropriate ACK number. Our offset field is just like IP header length that tells us how big our TCP header is in 32-bit words. So minimum is a 20-byte header and maximum is a 60-byte TCP header. Again, those session layer, if you want to think about that, the fin, sync, reset, push, ACK, and urge, that I view as the session layer. I'm finning, tearing down a session, syncing, starting a session, resetting, uh, sort of non-graceful way to tear down a session or kill the session. Push, prioritize, or push that segment out. And ACK, I'm ACKing something. The U bit, the urgent bit, says the urgent pointer field is active. So send that information up to the application urgently. After there, see our window, the TCP window, that is our receive window. So we're telling the other side how much data that we can receive. 
and that's how we manage flow control. So all this stuff kind of starts, gets initiated in that initial three-way handshake. I tell you, I want to synchronize sequence numbers, what options are in use, and we'll talk about that in more detail. Again, I set my, my sequence number. You take my sequence number plus one, the appropriate act from you. You tell me your sequence number, I take it, plus one, the appropriate act from me, and we've agreed to start a connection. You could also reset or reject my connection. I send a sync request to you know port 80 and you're not running the web server or the web server is down, so you can't accept the call. So you would then send me an ACK and a reset saying, yeah, sorry, can't, can't accept your call. And again, those those options, there's different options that get negotiated with inside of the three-way handshake. We'll talk about those here in just a minute. But let's look at those frames here in our Observer and Wireshark. So if we were to take a look at that trace, you can see here quickly that uh, the client is sending a sync request. Let's make this bigger so we can see all of this easily. So we can see the client sending the sync request, sequence number 643, window, receive window of 8192. Eight so we take initial sequence number, you notice act number 0. So we take 643 plus 1, the appropriate act, 644, which we see there. We see the server's uh, window of 17520. Again, there's no D length, no data length. The server tells us its sequence number of 891 plus 1. We expect an act from the client of 892, which we do see. And we see the client's window grow from 8192 to 8760. So that is the normal TCP three-way handshake process. Sequence number plus 1, the appropriate act. Both sides agree, tell each other our window sizes. We negotiate window sizes to be most efficient based on segment size. And then from this point on, it's sequence number plus payload length is the appropriate act. So if we kind of take a look at this again here, where we see oh, the uh, we've got a sequence number here of 644, this is the server sending sequence number 644, a length of 20 bytes, so 644 plus 20 bytes, we expect an ACK of 664, and we see that ACK over here of 664 telling us that the client received that information. Ah, sorry, the opposite way, 1057, I believe there's the client sending 644, 20 bytes of information, and the server acting with 664. Just looking at the ports, 21 would be the the server port, and 1057 the, the ephemeral client port, ephemeral short-lived port. So again, sequence number plus length, the appropriate act. And, and that's the way this process is going to work throughout the TCP uh, as we move data back and forth. Again, I can see the same information. Wireshark pretty much shows it the same way. Let me pop up our Wireshark here and take a peek at it. So we see the sequence number 643. Again, no, no length. Appropriate act of 644. The server sequence number of 891. Again, no length, appropriate ACK of 3892. So at that point, we're synchronized. The three-way handshake has happened. Now to actually go look at the uh, data that gets transferred. So here's looking at the same 20-byte information. Uh, making the request, source port 1057. And we see sequence number of 644 plus 20 bytes of length. So six. 44 plus 20, we expect an ACK of 664. It's telling us next sequence number, 664. And we see that ACK right there of 664. So the client sent 20 bytes and the server um, 
sorry, the server sent, no, in this case, the client sent 20 bytes, administrator and the uh, server act receipt of those 20 bytes and then made its next request. So there is the basics of TCP IP and how we guarantee delivery of data. My sequence number plus payload length, I expect an act from you. So thanks for watching. We'll do some more here in upcoming videos and, and continue our journey. So hope that was helpful. Make it a great day.